So yeah, this isn't bad at all. Using that Steam Deck preset with Cyberpunk 2077 and getting over 70 FPS out of it, I'd say this is some decent performance for a custom Steam machine under $200. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a custom Steam Deck OS machine for under 200 bucks using used parts from eBay. Now this is going to outperform the Steam Deck. It actually does a really good job. I was surprised by the performance this thing's putting out. And of course, if you wanted to scale the performance up from the get-go, you could always go with a better CPU and GPU, but we're going to be keeping the cost as low as possible while achieving decent performance using SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. Now, before we jump into it, I this do want to mention that. This video is sponsored by Ugreen. Whether you're looking for a charger for your Android device, your iPhone, your Nintendo Switch, or maybe even your laptop that supports up to 100 watts, they've got you covered with their GAN chargers. Now, the next node, 45 watt charger, is great for plugging in a couple Android devices or maybe even two iPhones. It supports up to 45 watt quick charging. Or if you need a little more, you can go with their 65 watt version here. We've got two USB Type C and a full size USB. This would actually be great for charging up a MacBook or maybe even your iPhone and a Nintendo Switch at the same exact time. But my personal favorite one that they make is the GAN X 100 watt. So this thing is absolutely amazing. We've got three USB Type-C ports and one full-size USB here. And obviously it supports 100 watt quick charging, but what makes this great is we can actually get 100 watts out of either of the top two USB Type-C ports. Now when it comes to USB-C 3, the third port here, 22.5 watts, and USB-A, 22.5 watts. And this comes in really handy for all of the newer devices that support up to 100 watt PD fast charging, like these handheld devices, laptops, and even some of the newer phones to the market support 100 watt charging. I wanted to give you a quick demo here. I've got the new AOK -OK Zoe handheld gaming device, and I've got the charger plugged into a kilowatt meter so we can see exactly what's going on. As you can see, it jumps up to 96 watts here, so we can charge this at 100 watts over that single USB Type-C port, which makes this charger come in really handy, especially for these newer devices. But if you don't need anything this heavy duty, you can go with the 45 watt or even the 65 watt, and if you're interested in any of these chargers, I will leave links in the description. Okay, so what we have here is a low-cost Lenovo MP93 small form factor PC that I picked up on eBay. You can get these for around $60 if you're bidding them out, and I would highly recommend getting one with the 4790. I'll leave some links in the description. And if you don't want to go with Lenovo, there are a ton of other PCs, small form factor or even mini tower with that 4790 that you can pick up for really cheap right now. These really are a dime a dozen, and a lot of my viewers have actually been able to get these, at least the Optiplexes, for free with similar specs. The one that I picked up didn't come with a hard drive, and we've got 12 gigabytes of RAM. It's kind of mix-matched here, but it does work. I just made sure of it. We've also got that i7-4790, so we've got four cores and eight threads up to four gigahertz, and those extra threads really do help out with newer AAA games. I actually was going to go with the i5-7500 because you can pick those up for real cheap also, but we've only got four cores there, and performance just wasn't going to be the same. Now, obviously, I'm going to be running Steam Deck OS or Steam OS 3 on this machine, and since I don't have a hard drive, I'm actually going to be running it from an external drive that I already had laying around. This is a one terabyte Toshiba mechanical drive, not the fastest, but we can boot the operating system over USB. And this Lenovo does have some USB 3 ports on it. Now it's obviously going to be slower than an internal drive or an SSD, but I already had this one terabyte drive and it's going to save me some money. Now the operating system we're going to be using is known as Hollow ISO. I've done an install tutorial, but since then they've done a lot of changes. It's actually really easy to get set up. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, basically what they've done is taken the Steam Deck recovery image and reworked it so it'll boot up on other systems. Now, uh, with the latest updates, we don't have NVIDIA support, so we're going to have to go with an AMD card. And obviously, running on the iGPU here with this 4790 really isn't going to work out. And you know, it would be nice to throw a big card in here like an RX 6750 XT, but it's not going to fit and it's definitely going to drive the price up. So we're going to go with something a bit cheaper and a lot smaller. This is actually one of my favorite cards of 2022. It's the RX 6400. I've seen these for around $100 on eBay. Now, if you want to pick one up new, you can get them for around $130 to $150. 
but I would just kind of wait it out and pick up a used one on eBay. Now, a lot of people don't like these cards because it is a lower powered card, and obviously that's what it was meant to do. It's a single slot, low profile card, doesn't require any extra power, and it's fully compatible with Steam OS 3 or Steam Deck OS. Now, uh, ideally, using something like a GTX 1650 would be the way to go. No power is required for those low-profile versions, but uh, just like I mentioned, Hollow ISO, at least right now, doesn't support NVIDIA cards, so we had to go AMD. And when it comes down to it, this is the most powerful low-profile single-slot Radeon card on the market right now. And I'll tell you, if you end up going with a mini tower, something a bit bigger that we can fit a larger card in, I would just go with the RX 580. You can pick those up super cheap on eBay, and you're going to get better performance out of it. And I've tested that same card. It does work with Hollow ISO. Now, one thing I always recommend doing with these used office PCs is reapplying some thermal paste. Now, this one here I've done. It was pretty dried up. But these things run continuously, and that thermal paste has probably never been changed on the one that you're going to pick up. I just used Noctua, really easy to do. We're just going to pull the heatsink off, clean up the CPU and the heatsink, reapply a little bead of thermal paste, then put it back together. And there was one last thing that I wanted to add to this PC, given that I'll be using a controller with it, and that was just a Bluetooth dongle. This doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and for internet connection, I'm going to be using Ethernet with this machine here. It does have Gigabit Ethernet built in. You can go with an Xbox controller and a Bluetooth 4.0 USB dongle. You can pick them up real cheap on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. Or you could go with a Steam controller. It comes with a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, or you could still connect it over Bluetooth if you wanted to. But uh, I've got the PC ready to go here. We've got that RX 6400 installed. I've got Hollow ISO installed on this one terabyte external drive. And all I need to do is boot it up and see how this thing performs. Okay, so we're booting from that external drive and this will be slower than an internal drive. I mean, it's not painfully slow given that we're running Linux here, but it's definitely noticeably slower than an SSD. And if I was to go with an external SSD, it'd be a lot quicker, but I had this mechanical drive laying around already. So if you've ever messed around with the Steam Deck or even seen one, then this interface is going to be very familiar. That's because this is SteamOS 3, the same operating system that's on the Steam Deck. And with Hollow ISO running on this PC, we've got access to all of the features we do with the Steam Deck, except for TDP control and uh, GPU clock control from the menu here. Now to open up this performance menu, you can press your home button and A. If you're on an Xbox controller, you're going to press your Xbox button and A at the same time. But we still got system-wide FSR. And if I head over here to the settings, I'll show you that we've got that 4790. Scroll down a bit. Four cores, eight threads, and we've got a max clock up to four gigahertz. I haven't seen it go up to four. I mean, every once in a while we might get a core to go up there. But uh, yeah, it's usually around 3.7. And for the GPU, we've got that RX 6400 with 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. Now with this setup here, the overall interface is very snappy. We can get in and out, download games. You can set up the performance overlay like you see on the left hand side if you want to. But uh, really, when it comes down to it, this is about gaming. So let's go ahead and jump right into it with The Witcher 3. So I had a good feeling we were going to get great performance out of this, and as you can see, I mean, it's running really well. We're at 1080p with a low-medium mix, and to tell you the truth, we probably just could have taken everything to medium here and still been over 60. And I don't have FSR on. Now, if I took this down to, let's say, 900p and then enabled system-wide FSR, might get a little boost there, but at 1080, I mean, we don't even need it with that low-medium mix. It's looking really good. Cyberpunk 2077 did a really great job with this little setup. We're at 720p with the Steam Deck preset, but we don't have system-wide FSR on, and we can get an average of around 81 FPS. Taking this game up to 900p with the same settings does give us a pretty decent steady 60 FPS, but we do get a few dips down into the mid-50s. It's not continuous at all, but I kind of wanted to see what we could do at 720, so I'd say to run this at 900p, we'd have to drop a few of these settings down to low, you know, from the medium Steam Deck preset here, and you could run this at 60 all day and have a really good time with it.
Here's Doom Eternal 1080p medium with no dynamic resolution on. Now I did lose sound here because I was messing around with the Proton presets. I tried a few different ones, but yeah, experimental is the way to go. I could get sound back by clearing the cache out, but I totally forgot to before I even started it up. But I mean, as you can see, this is one of those games that does run really well on this system. Here's Project Cars 2, still one of my favorite racing games, specifically for the Rallycross, and we're at 1080p medium. As you can see, we're locked at 60, and I did run into an odd issue with this one. Disabling VSync from the game and Steam Deck OS itself uh, just kept VSync on, as you can see. We're right there at 60. And I've seen this in the past on other systems with Hollow ISO. Usually, you just have to go into the game settings and change it from windowed to full screen or vice versa. And finally, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales 900p low settings. Now this is one of those games that is really hard on these lower end GPUs, and uh, we just don't have a super powerful CPU either, but it's definitely trying its hardest. So we are over 60, we're actually getting an average of around 67 FPS with it at 900p, but at 1080 does kind of fall on its face with the RX 6400 at least in SteamOS right now. And of course, we could alleviate a lot of those dips at 1080p by taking FSR to performance or ultra performance, but in my opinion, it kind of looks the same set up at 1080 with that FSR turned on versus 720 with no FSR. But either way, I mean, this little PC is actually doing a pretty decent job with Steam Deck OS, given the price here. And of course, going with the mid-tower case and adding something like an RX 580 will net you better performance than everything we saw at 1080p, but I wanted to keep the price as low as possible, and really, when it comes down to it, Hollow ISO, at the time of making this video, does not have great support for NVIDIA. And it really comes down to the updates that Valve has put out recently. Now, hopefully, they do release a full SteamOS 3 that we can install on basically any PC with full AMD and NVIDIA support. But until then, with Hollow ISO, we need to go with a Radeon card. And I do think that this is a pretty decent little setup if you can pick everything up for under 200 bucks, which really shouldn't be that hard if you keep an eye on eBay. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave some links in the description, eBay, Amazon, and I'll also leave a link to the Hollow ISO GitHub. They have a full explanation on how to install it. It's actually really simple to do. And as you saw in this video, it can be run from an external drive. Now, if you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.